Hello, my name is Dale Bonar. I will be your guide today for this express learning kit on emergency succession planning. I've been in the land conservation world for more than 20 years, first in the board of a new land trust in the Northwest and subsequently as the director of the Northwest program of the Land Trust Alliance, in which we worked with land trusts from Wyoming to Alaska. 12 years ago, I had the great good opportunity to return home to Hawaii to become the first executive director of what is now the statewide Hawaiian Islands Land Trust. Following my retirement from that position two years ago, I've been allied with the Solid Ground Consulting Firm, providing organizational training and guidance to land trusts across the country. Now, the two-part learning module we'll cover today looks at the rationale and importance for having an emergency succession plan in place, lays out the relevant issues for you to discuss as you develop your plan, and guides you through the production of a plan tailored to your particular organization. Now, land trusts around the country have grown and matured substantially in the last two decades. This has been a critical necessity since our stated missions of protecting lands in perpetuity is an audacious one. Consequently, we have to plan for organizational perpetuity as well. Regular, comprehensive strategic planning is a central part of that ongoing professionalism. Strategic plans typically focus on the goals and activities to be conducted over the subsequent three to five years that move the organization toward the long-term vision and objectives. One part of this long view that is often overlooked is the necessity of preparing for sustainable, effective leadership. Today's workshop is designed to address that topic, particularly to be prepared for when emergency situations arise. In a healthy organization, leadership is a balance between the staff and the board, each with their defined respective responsibilities. While organizational structure may vary, the leader we're focusing on today is generally the executive director, or CEO, who is responsible for overall day-to-day -day operations. Good succession planning includes both long-range and emergency scenarios. Both are important. The emergency plan we will cover here is particularly critical since emergency situations will not provide the opportunity for thoughtful analysis of how best to bridge the gap between current and future leadership. After all emergencies arise, imagine that you're the board president, it's Super Bowl Sunday and your team is on the field with a score tied in the fourth quarter. The phone rings and your executive director's spouse is on the phone with the following news. Your executive director is going to be out of commission for a long time. Or on a brighter note, your executive director has just won the lottery and the family will be leaving Wednesday on a six-month world tour. So how do you prepare for the unexpected? With an emergency succession plan in place, you will have a step-by-step -step action plan which the organization has approved and can be put into effect immediately. Now, the purpose for an emergency succession plan is that it clarifies the primary responsibility of the key board and staff members who would oversee it. It identifies potential internal or external interim leaders that could step into the position. It guides the communication with the important shareholders. It details authorities and responsibilities of key board and staff. And very importantly, it updates annually so that it's always current. Now the thought exercise for you here first is how broad an impact would the sudden loss of your leader have? Think about the various impacts an unexpected leadership hiatus would have in your organization's current structures and activities. Having a brief discussion among the participants at this point on the following considerations prior to moving into the second part of this series will help you focus on the best decisions for your organization to include within your plan. Think about your staff size and more importantly, the range of skills and talents possessed by the other staff members. Are organization responsibilities distributed throughout the staff and are there overlapping areas of responsibility? What is the leadership potential and interest 
of other existing staff members? And importantly, how urgently would your organization need immediate leadership? For example, are there major overwhelming projects, short deadline fundraising campaigns, or similar urgent demands for which the executive director has been a crucial figure? It is also very important to evaluate who on your staff has the primary responsibility for the various areas critical for a smoothly functioning organization. Office and staff management, bookkeeping, outreach, marketing, development, conservation projects you have ongoing, or the stewardship thereof. When several of these, or in some cases all, reside in one person, it's even more critical to have a plan in place to minimize disruption. Now the next few slides introduce the questionnaire, which you will work through during the second part of this learning module. Your organization's answers to these issues will produce the decisions that you will include in their final plan. First procedures, who's going to be responsible for implementing it? Typically, this is a board member or a small board committee. Second, what outcomes are expected of the administrator? Are they going to be tasked with making the interim decisions on hiring or on assigning reallocated duties? Or are they expected to bring proposed actions to the full board for approval? When is it necessary to identify an acting executive director? The decision between hiring a short term, a longer term, or a replacement director would depend upon the expected time of absence of the incapacitated executive director and on the urgency for having a single leader in place. If an acting executive director is not appointed, how will the director's duties be distributed among existing staff members? And finally, under what conditions should you choose to hire an external acting executive director? In looking at standing appointees, what internal candidates would you consider and in what order? What is the board oversight and what are the responsibilities of the acting executive director? Who does the acting director report to? What decisions can the acting executive director make on their own? And what decisions would require board approval before the organization moved together? Think about compensation. Would the acting executive director's salary be adjusted? And who will make that decision? Is that executive committee, the whole board? And finally, think about the communication plan that's needed. Who among your stakeholders need to be contacted about the absence? Think about those kind of things and make the list ahead of time. How will these communications be handled? Are you going to have direct contact? Will you be notifying by email? Or what other mechanisms will you use? And then finally, who is going to oversee those communication? The questionnaire worksheets included in your learning module will be utilized in the second part of this series, capturing your ideas and ultimately your decisions about what's most appropriate for your organization during the facilitated discussion of these issues. Consequently, you get a homework assignment. The following material should be reviewed by participants before the second session of the series begins. Review the model emergency succession plan included in your packet. Review the questionnaire handout and think about, and if you wish, jot down questionnaire answers as preparation for the discussions you will all do on these decisions. And as a final thought, remember, you have to expect some rain if you wish to see rainbows.